everyone, my name is Aria and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be taking you through my animation portfolio that I used to apply to universities in the UK. This is a video that I've been wanting to create for such a long time because when I was looking for videos to help me with my portfolio, it was such a struggle to find something to reference or some sort of guide on how to even start my portfolio. For context, I've not studied any art and design subject during my secondary and my sixth form years, which made it really difficult to find somewhere to start and to create my portfolio. So I really hope that this video is helpful and can be a good guide to help you start your portfolio. The universities that I applied to this year were UAL, London College of Communication, Arts University Bournemouth, Falmouth University, the University of the West of England, Bristol, and the University of Edinburgh. And I'm proud to say that I have offers from all of the universities besides Edinburgh. Although in the end, I don't think the Edinburgh course was the one for me, so I'm not too disappointed. In this video, I'll take you through my animation portfolio and show you each individual artwork and what I added as a caption for it and the layout and structure of the portfolio. So if you're a student who's looking to apply for animation or illustration or anything under the art and design category, I think that you'll find this video very helpful and a good guide on where to start. Now let me take you guys to my desk to film the next part of the video where I'm going to be using my webcam so the quality is probably going to drop really, really badly. Hey, so I'm at my desk right now and I'm ready to show you my portfolio. As you can tell, I used Wix to create my animation portfolio and I read on a couple websites that universities really appreciate when you take the time to create your own website to showcase your work. So, you know, I kind of wanted to show off and really show that I put effort into this portfolio uh, to give myself more of a chance to get, get all of those places. I think by creating your own website, it kind of allows you to add your own personal touch to it. On here you can add little animations and other things to just make your portfolio even more engaging and expressive. So I really encourage you to create your own website when creating your portfolio. As a lot of universities give you the option to either add a link or let you upload a, a document so you get that choice which I think you should go with creating your own website. So to start I um, introduced myself, my name is Aria Pele uh, and then I said animation portfolio 2021 of course. Um, I included my Instagram profile picture um, at the front just to show what I look like. Although I saw a couple other people insert a picture of themselves. I was thinking of doing that but I didn't know like if they wanted to see my face or not. I don't <laughs> so you know what it's an animation portfolio so why not put like a, a digital drawing of myself it looks cute as well so for this portfolio i split it into four sections um, as you can tell the first section is sketchbook slash developmental work the second is digital art slash resolved work then there's life drawing and observational drawing which is crucial for the portfolio i've seen a lot of sources say that this is what universities look for so that's very important and I'm going to state this right at the beginning so that um, if you take anything from this video life drawing and observational drawing is always listed under the requirements for the portfolio um, as well as the other stuff but this one is quite important um, and then my final section is animation although you could put that under digital art but I just wanted to separate it um, so that my portfolio would flow so let's go through the first section together so this is my sketchbook and developmental work. Firstly, I'll introduce my character that I've designed. Her name is Ren. And this was a couple of um, outfit designs that I created for this character to show what she could have looked like. I included this because I think that it's really important to show um, the process of how your character developed and I really wanted to showcase this and I think it was quite interesting to see how her outfit has changed uh, although I stuck with her original design which I didn't include here um, but I just wanted to show early stages of this character uh, so these are her outfits and uh, I'll put up the caption so that you can read it so these are just initial developmental character designs outfit designs uh, for Ren next we've got sketchbook drawings of Ren uh, which are coloured, so this would show my um, interviewer that 
I've um, thought about the colours for her, for my character and I've done a, a couple sketches here and there. Um, just introducing the character because she does appear a lot in this portfolio so I just wanted it to flow like that. To show how she initially started in my sketchbook to then develop and become more of a real character in my digital art. So this is um, an early drawing of her and this is the caption for it so these are again initial sketches. Next I introduce my second character which is called Hugh. She's a really feisty, aggressive <laughs> character and she's inspired by a paintbrush because she is a painter and I, on the left you see a couple sketches that I drew of her, very early sketches. Um, she, her design has changed since then but not that much, it's mainly the hair. I really like her design. She's like, like I said, she's meant to resemble a paintbrush, and you can see that with her ponytail, where it looks like the tip of a paintbrush um, with a bit of paint on it. <laughs> Something that I think is important with your sketchbook is that you should add some annotations, and this is really helpful for whoever's viewing your portfolio because they get to read uh, your thought process and understand more about the character than just looking at the character because you can tell a lot from a character but to show um, the thought process of the artist is really important so that's what I included here on the side you can have a look and yeah I just um, talked about her uh, physical appearance and what that meant and why I made those decisions so I think that was important so uh, if you do have any character designs definitely include those in your portfolio and add a couple captions I think that your interviewer will really appreciate that and again here are the very first sketches and plan of my character Hugh from my sketchbook um, next we've got character designs again for Hugh on the left and on the right is another character that, that ha I haven't really developed as much um, but his name is Ellipse um, and I just included both of those character designs and initial sketches you can see how her hair has kind of changed she's got more of a fringe covering one of her eyes um, I think that it looked a bit more sharp and mean <laughs> uh, because it there's a point at the end and that's her character aggressive and just you get what I'm saying <laughs> but to the right um, Ellipse. Uh, he's just a character that I created one day. Uh, I haven't really done too much development on it but I just wanted to show some variety and just include a lot of sketchbook stuff because al alongside um, life drawing sketchbook work is really important. And here I wrote left improved designs of hue and right character designs for a new character Ellipse. Then I did a character turnaround for Ren. This was my first time doing a character turnaround, um, so <laughs> it's not the best, but I included it because I really wanted my portfolio to really stand out as an animation portfolio. I really wanted to try my best and um, vary my portfolio and add things that uh, an animator who's had experience would include in their portfolio um, for their characters. So I did this character turnaround um, and the description says Ren character turnaround, character turnaround of my character Ren for animation. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah, captions are meant to be kept at a minimum at least for the universities that I applied to because they gave me a limit so I was very limited on what I could add. Next, more sketchbook pages because that's important. On the left I did some thumbnail sketches which are like really small like uh, not very detailed sketches just planning out what you're trying to draw and I did those on post-it notes and I glued them into the sketchbook just to make it more colourful and interesting to look at and this drawing was like based on like lockdown and how I was super stressed balancing my A levels which aren't related to art and a portfolio all at once whilst dealing with being at home during the pandemic so just threw that in and create something interesting. On the right um, I did some drawings and I coloured them with my markers and these drawings are based off of uh, Pinterest pictures that I found 
uh, and I drew them in my style so I just included them just to vary the portfolio again um, and just to show that I do a lot of experimentation in my sketchbook and the last thing from this section is something quite different to what you've seen um, it is a storyboard this is actually my first time doing a storyboard I've never really tried doing one because my characters aren't as developed just yet um, but I really wanted to include this um, because I think that it would be a strong point in my portfolio that at least I've showed that I've tried um, to create a storyboard so you can you can pause and read it but um, this is a little story that I created um, it was very I didn't have much time to create the story and develop it but it just shows what what the story could be and um, to just introduce my characters and bring them to life and really uh, showcase what their personalities um, are. During my Falmouth University interview, my interviewer actually said that this was a really strong point in my portfolio and she really loved my storyboard. So that was something that really, really, really made me happy because again, I've never done this before. So to hear that from a professional, I was just like, oh, I did something right. <laughs> so another thing that you might want to take away is include a storyboard. And the description for that says, Ren's reality is what I've named the storyboard. So Ren's reality, storyboard. Storyboard exploring the story of my characters, Ren and Hugh. Oh. <clears throat> And then because this is my own website, I, um, I added a little caption on the side for the section showing just basically stating um, what's here in this section. So I said developmental sketches and designs of my characters and their stories. Um, now we go to the next section, which is digital art slash resolved work. Um, so there's a mix of digital art and put photography in here. <laughs> Just one piece and um, also uh, watercolour painting so I'll take you through all of those and um, talk you through why I chose these. So firstly is a lovely picture of my best friend <laughs> that we took at her house in her bathtub. We had like a little milk bar photo shoot and um, I took this picture and I thought you know, I could make something really cool out of this and um, utilize my digital art skills, so that's what I did. And here you see her lying in a bathtub with her hair flowing back and some vines and um, greenery growing out, her, growing out of her. <laughs> so I included this, I just wanted it to be a bit artsy. And uh, this is what came out of that. <laughs> and the description for that is... Photography and digital art. Experimentation with photography and digital art. The photo was taken by me and drawn on Krita. Um, I just wanted to add something different to the portfolio because you don't have to just stick with digital art. If you've done something in school which is uh, related to animation or uh, in the arts field in general, you can just put, throw that in there. Um, it just shows that you're um, pretty versatile and you've had a lot of experience with other forms of media. Um, this drawing is actually one of my favourite drawings that I've done. Um, this is, again, my character Ren that you've seen earlier, but digitised. So in this drawing, I really wanted to highlight um, her personality. And she's quite a bubbly and enthusiastic character, so I do her jumping up in the air with her pen in her hand and just a big old smile. And I really wanted to showcase that in one image and here it is so this is like my favorite piece of work of her and um, it just shows, shows how the portfolio flows from initial sketches of her to a more refined drawing of her and and the description for that says Ren digital character design Digital character design of my character Ren, drawn using Krita, created to show her personality. Um, and I think it is include, and I think it is important to include what software that you've used, just to show what your experience or you have access to. Um, next, we have a couple more pieces of artwork, uh, digital artwork. So this one is a girl in space who's um, 
cuddling some planets <laughs> so I just did this for a, um, a competition that I entered and um, I just played around with it see what I could take and do with this picture um, and the description for this one says digital art entry for an international illustration contest the cutest character in the galaxy so that was the drawing for that and I thought it would be really interesting to put in and just uh, show my take on that concept. Here is Hugh, my character that I showed you earlier, and a digitized version of her and um, what she would look like. So I made her blonde because I thought that would resemble what the end of a paintbrush would look like and give her more of like an attitude because I think that would be really fitting for her character. This drawing just came to me out of nowhere to be honest. I was just sitting at my desk and I didn't really know what to draw and I was just doodling and this is what came out of that and I really like it. I really like the colours that I've chosen. It really just shows you hue. Shows shows you hue. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just gives you an idea of what she would look like. So here it says, Hugh initial digital character design, my first digital character design for my character Hugh. Next is a drawing that I did during the lockdown again. Um, I just thought I wanted to draw something that would looks pleasing and um, just had a good feeling to it when you look at it with the sun and just, you know, laying outside in the grass, something that we've not really been able to do. <laughs> Um, at least last year. So I drew that and uh, I really like the colours used here um, to really showcase that serenity and that peacefulness um, and the description I used for that, for that one. Um, digital art inspired by the lockdown. Digital art capturing the serenity and happiness of nature and the outdoors during, during the summer. And lastly for this section is a watercolour painting that I did um, of a character, again with the space theme, um, a girl in space. Uh, I just wanted to test out watercolours and change my mediums up as I mainly work with digital art. So it was quite fun using watercolours to create this and yeah I think for my first show it was pretty good. <laughs> um, and yeah I think that this was a cute picture to include um, going fitting very well with the space theme and uh, just experimentation because that's what I was doing here and this was actually a part of my sketchbook so um, it is part of my sketch it should be part of the sketchbook category but it's quite resolved because it is so I, I just put it here <laughs> and um, for that I wrote watercolour painting, a watercolour painting of a character inspired by space and then I've added a little caption here saying digital art pieces that I have created using Krita, here are some digital art character designs that I have created just to sum up what's in this category um, if someone were to just skim through it. Um, yeah, next section is life drawing and observational drawing. <sighs> well. Here we have a light study of, you guessed it, me! <laughs> um, I've never done a light study before, ever, so this was interesting to do. <laughs> um, I, w I wouldn't say it's too bad for my first try, um, but I just, again, really wanted to vary the portfolio up. Um, as I've mentioned before, I've not studied any art subject before, so it was quite difficult to include uh, other pieces of work that I've done at school because I hadn't, and I really wanted to vary the portfolio and just try everything that I could um, and see what would happen if I did that. So I had a go, um, and here's the outcome. <laughs> And the description for that is portrait light study, digital light study done on Krita using myself as a reference. Next we have life drawing. So for my life drawing, I would use a website which would have loads of models and different poses and it would give you a timer and you can draw them in that pose. And I think that was really helpful because it gives you um, 
an idea of what kind of poses um, you can include in this portfolio and what the interviewers are um, looking for. So I made sure to do lots of life drawing um, months and months in advance just to really understand how life drawing works. Um, I've done a lot of life drawing now and I think that that's something that is integral to this portfolio because everywhere you look on every website for animation uh, at university they always mention life drawing as a must and a strong point in your portfolio so definitely practice and use those sites i'll try and include them in the description for this video so that you can reference that and uh, use those websites because they are very helpful and for this piece I wrote sketchbook life drawings life drawing page from my sketchbook using colored pencils to highlight certain features of the body and here are some more sketchbook pages but with life drawing which is why it's in this section where I've just again used those sites to uh, draw different models and different poses to really understand the human body um, because I do enjoy creating characters and I think that learning about different body types and drawing them out really does help me as an artist to improve. In definitely include these. And for the description I wrote, life drawing, life drawing practice for my sketchbook of different poses. Next up, more life drawing. So again, on the left and right, there's both um, life drawing pieces. All of the life drawing that you've seen, uh, I've taken different amounts of time to draw. Uh, I've not included those in the, um, in the portfolio, but they range about, from about uh, one minute to, I guess, I think three minutes or so. Um, so they're not long at all. So here's a lot of work that I've done as practice to practice my life drawing skills. And I know that at university they do have uh, life drawing classes, which uh, sometimes they have weekly. So uh, it's good to have a head start and understand the human anatomy. Next we have some more sketches and drawings, so I really wanted to tick off all the boxes that the universities could potentially have um, for their students, so I wanted to include sketches that I've done out in public. I know that during this time it was pretty hard to go out, but when I was able to, I went to the park and I would just draw people that, that were around me, and it was quite an enjoyable thing to do, especially in the summer. So definitely do that. Carry a sketchbook around with you. It doesn't have to be a big one. A small one's fine and maybe jot down some ideas that you see as you're going by your day or any people that you see because it's really interesting to get ideas and inspiration from the real world and incorporate that into your artwork and designs for your characters. So that's what I did. I would go to the park and just observe people around me and draw them. So I encourage you to do that as well. Um, I think it just adds a little bit of something to your portfolio and show that you've gone out of your way to improve yourself as an artist. And here I wrote <laughs> park sketches, observational drawings of people and surroundings conducted at the park. And lastly for this section I have two pages of again observational drawing um, where I on the left drawn my two best friends um, and drawn them in my style so that's Issa and Sharia right there my besties so shout out to you guys because <laughs> you guys are the best and um, that one there I mean you can't see me point this one over here yeah she was the one in the bathtub so you know she's um, been a very important part of this portfolio so thank you Issa and to your right is some observational drawing that I did at the park of a group of people who were having a picnic. So again, I would encourage you to do that. Maybe go to a park or a public setting where you can just draw people or draw things around you because that would um, make your portfolio more interesting. For that caption, I wrote stylized life drawing. Left, life drawing on my friends in my art style. And then on the right, life drawing drawn at the park in my style last section is animation so for my animation i created a five second animation which you may recognize if you saw my last video is my introduction to my youtube channel or my little intro so i will play it now so you guys can see what it looks like but i'll read the caption first it says a five second animated introduction for my youtube channel created using paint tool sai and shotcut 
and the audio isn't mine, it's from uh, Ryan Little, 70s TV. If you're able to create an animation, at least one, that would be really great for your portfolio because not all universities expect students to have already done animation before or created their own, but they do like to see it. And it does appear as optional in the portfolio, but if you have it, it will make your portfolio all that more special. So I'm gonna play my animation and uh, show you what it looks like. So that's my animation. Um, that character right there is me. <laughs> and I wanted to create a little intro to my YouTube channel and something that I could post on Instagram to announce my YouTube channel. So I created this sometime last year and included it in my portfolio because I thought that would be a strong point for it. So if you can include animation, that would be really great for your portfolio and your chances of getting in. And that concludes my animation portfolio. Uh, universities are looking for in an animation portfolio. I'd like to say that my animation points more in the direction of 2D animation, which is what I'm more interested in. But if you're interested in 3D animation and you've done maybe 3D modeling, include some of that kind of work as well in your portfolio. But definitely include sketchbook work, digital art, um, and life drawing. Those are like the three most important parts of your portfolio for animation. I hope that this video has been helpful and gives you an idea of what universities are looking for in an animation portfolio. Feel free to message me on Instagram at oritunes and I'll be down to answer any questions that you have regarding the animation portfolio and the application process, at least in the UK. So if you're watching this video and you're creating your animation portfolio for university, make sure you give yourself enough time to just focus on this portfolio because it is quite a long process. At least for me, it was super long because I, I didn't know where to start and I hadn't studied any art design stuff so I had to juggle A-levels and this portfolio which was quite hectic but you know I got there in the end you know got most of my offers and I couldn't be more proud of myself <laughs> so with that being said thank you so much for watching this YouTube video and I will see you in my next one bye